In this video, we are going to discuss another question of interview preparation marathon contest and the topic was arrays. If you have already participated in this contest, that is great. You can just go ahead and see how we solve the problem. In case you haven't, make sure you participate in the upcoming contest. It's a kind of three month contest where you will be solving questions from one of the important topics of interview and the question will be very much around interview only. Okay. So the last week topic was arrays. Uh, before we get into the arrays, just wanted to tell you, you can check the schedule over here. Okay. So let's just jump into arrays. So in this video, we'll be discussing about unique array. Rest of the questions are discussed in different videos. You can just go ahead and watch it. Okay. Let's just go into unique array. So this has gone to practice problems. Let's just go to practice problems. Okay. So I have tested my code. So I've just deleted it. We'll write it once again. Okay. So let's just go ahead and solve this particular problem. We'll first try and understand the problem statement. Then we'll try a, write a code. So depending upon what is the response we get, we modify the code or we just let it be depending upon what the response we get for our logic. Okay. So first let's just understand the question. Okay. So the question goes as follow. Prabhupada gave you an array of length n containing all integers from 0 to n minus 1. Array must start from index 0. He asks you to find the maximum length of unique array. Okay. A unique array is called A where A is equal to A of i, A of A of i and this continues and all the elements are unique. Okay. Let's just read whatever happened again. So we are basically given an array of length n and in the length n array all the integers will be ranging from 0 to n minus 1. Okay. Array will start from index 0. Okay. He asks you to find the maximum length of unique array. Okay. We have to find some unique array. Let's see what is the unique array. A unique array is called A when A is equal to this particular thing and all the elements are unique. So we have to use this particular format and we have to ensure that all the elements are unique and they are saying the question is saying that there could be maximum such arrays and we have to find the maximum length of all the arrays. So let's see I, what is this i going to be. So suppose the first element in A starts with the selection of element ai of index ai then next element in A will be a of a of i then this then this till you don't find a duplicate element in the unique array a so i suppose this i is going to be from 0 to n minus 1 this is what they are saying let's just see the problem statement so till now what we have understood is that there is going to be an array we will be given as input having elements from 0 to n minus 1 from that particular array what we have to do is we have to form new arrays we have, there could be different arrays that will be forming and they will be in this particular format we have to find out that all the arrays that have been formed of this particular format which one is having the maximum length okay let's just go ahead and see the input output format in examples the first line of the input contains an integer t the number of test cases this is my t it's one here for each test case the first line of the input contains an integer n the size of the array this is n the second lights the second line of the input contains n integers a of 0 a of 1 to l minus 1 separated by spaces so as you can see this is here so in this case the length is 7 so all the elements as you can see is from 0 to 6 there is no element beyond that okay all the elements are in this particular range and all the elements are unique okay now what this is how the input is going to be output is going to be for each test case print the output in the new line output should be maximum length of the array of the unique array make sure of the unique array okay so let's just see the input output so basically this was my input and this is the output which means they are saying the maximum unique length will be 5 of the unique array. So they are saying maximum length will be 5 of the unique arrays that's going to form. Let's just see the sample test cases. So let's say the input is this 3, 5, 0, 1, 6, 2, 4. So let's say for index 0 what is going to be my output. Let's see for index 0. So the first element is going to be let's put it down 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 this is an index. So it's going to be of 0. So a of 0 is going to be 3. Okay. So next element is going to be a of 3. Okay. So next element will be 3 which is which is 3, 1. Next element is going to be a of 1. What is 1? It's going to be 5. So next element is going to be a of 5. What is 5? a of 5. It's going to be 2. What is going to be a of 2? a of 2 is going to be 0. Now what is going to be a of 0? It's going to be 3. So as you can see that all the elements has to be unique but since 3 has already occurred in the array we won't consider this. So this has given me in size 5 okay. 
So here, this is the one we are talking about, 3, 1, 5, 2, 0. Let's just try for one more index. Let's say index starts with 1. Okay. So let's see what happens. So we have a of 1 equal to 5. Okay. a of 1 equal to 5. That's how it starts. So first element is going to be 5. Next is going to be a of 5, which is going to be 2. Next is going to be a of 2, which is going to be 0. Next is going to be a of 0, which is going to be 3. Next is going to be a of 3, which is going to be 1. Next is going to be a of 1, which is 5, which is already there. So this is also 5. So we see till now maximum is 5 only. Let's just try one more. So let's start from 2. So let's say index is 2. Okay. So now we have a of 2 equal to 0. We have a of 0 equal to 3. We have a of 3 equal to 1. And we have a of 1 equal to 5. We have a of 5 equal to 2. We have a of 2. Okay. So we came back here. So I think this is again 5. We are just seeing all the cases that is there any other of length greater than this or less than this. So let's see for index equal to 3. It starts from 1. A of 3 equal to 1. So if you see, you know, that once this cycle starts from 1, you know, if you can see this goes ahead. So I don't think there's a need to solve this completely. We'll have A of 3, A of 1, A of 2. And from A of 2, it will be A of 0. And from 0, it will be A of 3. And this is, this is going to be the cycle. So now this is how it's going to be. So I think the maximum length is going to be 5 here also. Let's start with A of 4. Okay, 4 is something we haven't come across. So A of 4 is going to be 6. A of 6 is going to be 4. Okay, so I think this is it. This is going to be of length 2. So let's say we have index equal to 5. Okay, for 5 it's going to be A of 2. Again, you know, once we are in A of 2, I think this particular thing is going to happen. Let's say this is how it is, you know, like this is how it is. So we will we are going to have a of 2. a of 2 is going to be 0. a of 0 is going to be 3. a of 3 is going to be 1. a of 1 is going to be 5. a of 5 is going to be 2. So, you know, the whole uh, thing will continue again. So I think for index 5 also we have the thing, that same result. And for a, a of 6, again, we are going to have this particular result. So I can see one length that I got was 2 and another length was 5. Hence, the answer is going to be 5. Okay, so that is how the output is going to be. So now just think for of more, just now just try and solve this problem. If you cannot think of the most optimized approach or anything like that, just do the brute force thing. Just think how it is going to be. So, you know, what we did, we were, we were just generated all the things. And, you know, while we were generating the array, we were just seeing that, okay, is there anything that is not already visited? And we were seeing that. Okay. And also, if you see the hint that, you know, number that is once visited, you know, let's say if it is coming in here, the moment a of 2 comes in here, again, the same cycle is happening. Okay. So just think around it and we'll just try to solve the problem after that. Okay. So I hope you have tried the question on your own. And if you haven't, I'll just again suggest that it's okay if you're not coming up with the most optimized approach or something, try the brute force one. Let's just try the brute force one first. Okay. So if you would have seen what we did was that we simply generated all the unique arrays. Okay. And then what we did, we just keep, let's say, maximum count. Whosoever is the maximum, that will be the result, okay? Now, how did we generate all the unique arrays? So, what we can do is we can start from for i equal to 0 to i less than m, i plus plus. So, what will I do is, let's say my array is going to be r, okay? So, now what I'll do is, let's say I keep a visited array and let's say I initialize it to, let's say all the elements are 0 or something, okay? So, what I'll do is, let's say I'll start with the first element of that particular array okay of that unique array so let's say this is for this is a zeroth index array this is first index array this is second index so this is the unique array that starts from zero this is the one that starts from index one and then second okay so we'll have the first element let's say it's called x so x will be a of zero okay so what we will do now is we start running a loop like we were doing we were we start running a loop that we will keep on going to the next element unless we find that the element that we are going next is already visited. So we will keep a check that while visited of x, basically this is the next element, let's say, we have to find out that the next element that we are adding in our loop or adding in our cycle, is it already visited? If it would be visited, what we'll do is that as soon as you visit a particular number, we will mark it as one, okay? Then we will just check if visited x is not equal to zero, okay? If this is not equal to zero, sorry, if this is not equal to one, which means this is not visited, I'll go ahead, okay? So what I'll do is, let's say I also keep a count here. 
let's say the count starts with zero. Okay, so I'll just check that if this is not equal to one, I'll increment increment my count. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll just visit it x equal to one. Okay, and now what I'll do is I'll go for the next element. What is going to be my next element? So it is going to be a of x, right? So let's say my next x is going to be a of x. Okay, so this is how it's going to be, and I'll end my loop here. Okay, this is the bad place to end the loop. I'll end this particular loop here. So this loop will keep on continuing. Okay, this loop will keep on continuing. Okay, and after this loop finishes, which means after we have generated one array, we'll keep an element max here. So let's say max is initially minus one or something. We'll check that whichever is maximum, max is equal to let's say let's call it maxi. Maxi is equal to max of count count comma max up till now. So this basically counts that whether this particular count is greater or whatsoever has been my max till now is greater. Okay. So this is a very brute force approach, and um, this is the very simple approach. Let's just go ahead and write code on this, and just let's try to run this code and see if we are getting the right answer. So this will be my code. Let me explain the code to you. So let's say answer is my final answer that I have to print. So this is the main function. From here, I'm just taking the size of the array as the input. I'm having the array. In which I'll be taking the array and then elements of the array, and then I'm just taking the elements of the array here, and then I'm calling this unique array function. Here, my answer is initialized to zero initially. This is basically the answer that I'll be printing. Then I'm running a loop. I have this visited array, and what I'm doing is I'm initializing it to zero. Then I'm having the whatsoever index it's going to be. Here, I'm getting the first element of the index. Then I have the count initially as zero. So this was the loop that we saw. We Increment the count. We update our visited, and then we get the next element of that particular loop. And at the end, what we do is, when this particular loop just finishes, we check that if the answer is greater than the current, uh, you know, the maximum till now or not. If it is, we update it, and then we return it, and then we print it. Okay. Let's first run this code, and then we'll try and submit this code. Okay. So as you can see, you're getting right answer for this particular test case. Let's just submit this code and see what happens. So as you can see, we got time limit exceeded. So we need to optimize our approach. So now I just want you to observe this pattern that we made in this particular test case. I just want you to observe this particular pattern and try and find out how we can just reduce the number of operations or maybe optimize. So we will do that, but make sure you try before this. Okay. So let's just try and optimize the code. So what I did was that I took the example here and I just made all the arrays. You know, this is array that starts from zero. This starts from one. This starts from two, and I then I took some other thing that was starting from four. So just wanted you to observe something, okay? So if you can see that the array starts from zero, all the elements involved are three, one, five, two, and then it goes to zero. Here, though it starts from five, it goes from five, two, zero, three, and one. And here it's as well. It will start from a of two, which is going to be zero, which is that it starts from here, then it goes till here. Here, here, and then stops here. So ultimately, the length is going to be five. Okay. So if you see what is happening is that initially what we were doing is that we were completely ignoring this particular repetition. We are completely ignoring this repetition. What we were doing is that here in this case, let's say we have a visited array. So it will be just like till six. Okay. So what we were doing is we had the visited array. So let's say what happens is that for zero, it's going to be three. I mark three as one. This is the visited array in first case. Then we have one. A of three is one. Let's say I mark this as one. Then we have A of one is five. I mark one as five as one. Then I go to A of five, which is two. I mark two as one. Then I go to A of two, which is zero, and I mark this one. So let's say I start the next array. I started from here. Now I see five here. Now if I would have just seen the visited array, that five here, there is one particular array already. Let's say array one is there. There is already array one that has already included five in its own. Let's let's call it path. Okay, array one has already included five in its path, which means that if we are getting five here at the end of the day, we will end up with the same cycle or the same path. The only thing is that the path might have different start point and end point, but the number of elements will remain the same because what is happening here is that there is no way that. Five can be achieved from any other path, right? So if five is coming here, then ultimately this particular thing will only come in picture. 
from 5 we are going to 2 from 2 we are going to 0 from 0 to 3 3 to 1 and every time every time 5 will occur in any any particular path the same thing will happen it's just that the start and end will be different so rather than what happens is that rather than just going across making the visited array again and then uh, you know again just going across all these elements as soon as we see that it is going to be 5 i won't go ahead here i'll just terminate i'll just terminate here only okay so now till here because it's going to be 4 and nothing more than that it's going to be 5 and nothing more than that now here again what happens is that i come to a of 2 which is 0 okay again i see a of 0 is visited again now what will happen is that this is visited which means previously in some of the arrays i have already taken 0 into consideration 0 has been there in some path which means whatsoever path that generates out of 0 is taken care of again let's say in this particular case the 0 is here though in this case also what will happen is that this is acting as the start point the elements will remain the same this will act as part start point it will go from here here to here here to here the start point in this case becomes this and end point obviously becomes this so the start point and end point changes but the elements remain the same so what again what i'll do is that i check that this is one which means i need not go further i'll just cancel it okay now here there's a new path that is getting generated so i'll just go ahead and keep generating this particular path unless obviously i come to an end or something like that so again i'll keep generating in this case what happens is that a of 4 is 6 is 6 visited so we start with a of 4 which is 6 we check is 6 visited no i mark it as 1 then again i see a of 6 is 4 is this visited no i mark this as 1 so now this gives me the answer 2 okay so what we are doing right now is that rather than traversing all the path again and again we are storing that okay this path is already generated and at any point we see that okay any element of that path is generated which means we need not go again so what we are doing here is that so this is where we are saving our time we are stopping our traversal or we are stopping generating the array as soon as we come across a very common element as soon as we come across an element that has already been taken care by in the previous path so what we need to do right now is that here we were generating the visited array again and again we will call, keep a common visited array and we will keep referring to this particular visited array and as soon as any of the path covers one element the other path is not going to cover that or the other unique array is not going to cover that because at the end the length will remain same okay so this is the optimization we have done let's just submit the code and see if we get the right answer okay so as you can see it is accepted so make sure you solve few test cases on your own because this concept is something that majorly came across in mind by solving more and more cases and observing the thing or that this is what it is happening and as you keep on you know if you solve just one case you will realize that okay yeah this is how it is then you will solve two cases then you will solve three cases and you'll be like okay this is the pattern this is coming in and this is how we can optimize the code okay so make sure you try on your own and make sure you keep participating in the contest all the very best